Hello and welcome to the Hindu. I am Priyali Prakash and you're watching Tipping Point, our weekly show where we dive into climate change events and the trends shaping our future. In today's episode, we'll take a look at the new emissions reduction goal set by the United States, extreme weather events in 2024, and a story of hope for farmers from Pune. The United States has updated one of its nationally determined contributions or NDCs and is now targeting a more ambitious reduction of its greenhouse gas emissions. Before we get into it, let's quickly understand what NDCs are. NDCs are country specific policies that form a pathway to its net zero emissions targets. Article 4.2 of the Paris Agreement requires countries to prepare and update these domestic NDCs to achieve their climate goals. NDCs are to be updated based on the Global Stock Take Report, which is a periodic review of how countries are performing in their efforts to control greenhouse gas emissions and to transition to cleaner energy. The nationally determined contributions can be of two types: conditional and unconditional. If a country needs external financial support to fulfill an NDC, it is a conditional one. Unconditional NDCs are targets that countries can achieve without external financial support. Climate change is a transboundary problem and what each country does to cut its emissions adds up. Countries are expected to declare new NDCs by February 2025. These targets should draw lessons and account for progress from the previous goals and also include the latest signs and show ambition to be their absolute best versions. These targets are economy-wide and should be aligned with the goals of the Paris Agreement. According to the updated NDC, the US will work towards a reduction of its net greenhouse gas emissions to the tune of 61 to 66% below 2005 levels in 2035. The previous target was to reduce emissions by 50 to 52% below 2005 levels by 2030. According to the Climate Action Tracker, the 2021 NDC targets set by the US are almost sufficient for a world that is warmer by less than 2 degrees Celsius but not compatible to keep global warming under 1.5 degrees Celsius. As scientists have repeatedly pointed out, our current efforts are not enough to keep global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and preferably under 1.5 degrees Celsius as decided under the Paris Agreement. According to the 2024 emissions gap report, emissions globally must fall 57% for 1.5 degree Celsius heating and 37% for 2 degree Celsius. 2024 is said to be the warmest year on record for the earth, and scientists have predicted that global warming is likely to breach the 1.5 degree Celsius mark this year. The 2035 NDC submitted by the United States is keeping in line with its goal to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. The country plans to achieve this target through public and private sector investments and technological advancements. The country also said that it expects increased federal engagement later this decade to aid the goal. In its announcement of the updated NDC, The United States government has extensively credited two laws of outgoing president Joe Biden's term, the Inflation Reduction Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, to showcase the country's progress in moving towards clean energy. The Inflation Reduction Act was approved in 2022 and is considered to be one of the biggest investments made by the US towards climate action. For example, it provides a tax deduction to low and middle income households to go electric. supports investment in renewable energy through tax credits among other things the bipartisan infrastructure law was signed in 2021 and its goals include modernizing the country's power grid making clean energy more affordable building an economy resilient to climate change and more there is however a catch in the aspirations of the united states to cut its greenhouse gas emissions donald trump is scheduled to be back as the president of the country in january 2025 and he has made it quite clear that climate change is not a topic of interest for him in fact during his last term between 2016 and 2020 he withdrew from the paris agreement which is probably the reason why the official statement of the biden administration stresses upon subnational contributions to achieve the 2035 emissions target the document says that due to federal structure of the united states the actions of subnational and tribal governments will be critical to achieving the 2035 emissions target. We'll have a clearer idea of how this pans out under Trump 
once he assumes office on January 20th. This is our last episode of Tipping Point in 2024, so we'll take a look at some of the extreme weather events that occurred over the year. Many of these were attributed to climate change caused by human activities. Let's look at India first. A few weeks ago, we discussed a report by the Centre for Science and Environment, along with Down to Earth, in one of our episodes. This report found that India experienced extreme weather on more than 90% of days between January and September 2024. One of the worst extreme weather events in India in 2024 was the Wayanad landslide caused by extreme rainfall. According to an analysis by the World Weather Attribution, the intensity of the rainfall was made worse by climate change caused due to anthropogenic activities. Heavy rainfall also caused extensive flooding in Tripura in August. The situation was so bad that 11 teams of the National Disaster Response Force were deployed in the state to assist in relief and rescue operations. More than 30 people were killed and over a lakh had to take shelter in relief camps as floods destroyed infrastructure. Torrential rainfall also battered Gujarat in August, affecting the state and especially Vadodara, which recorded more than 239 millimetres of rain in 24 hours between August 26 and 27. 49 people were killed in rain-related incidents. Assam floods almost every year and yet it remains a recurring situation. In 2024, more than 2 lakh people in 10 districts of the state were affected by floods. More than 100 people died in flood, landslide, lightning and storm incidents. Manipur has already been reeling under ethnic violence since May 2023 and the floods this year added to the troubles of the people. In May, Cyclone Remal caused destruction across West Bengal and also affected Assam, Mizoram, Manipur and Meghalaya. By June, Floods in Manipur had affected almost 2 lakh people and damaged more than 24,000 houses. North and Central India saw one of their worst heat waves in 2024, with temperatures soaring as high as over 47 degrees Celsius in Delhi's Najafgarh. Across the world, Hurricane Helene killed over 200 people as it moved through the states of Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee and Virginia in the United States in September. Researchers have suggested that the extreme nature of this storm could have been made worse by a heat wave in the Gulf of Mexico. An unprecedented amount of rainfall in eastern Spain in late October and early November caused flash floods in the Valencia region, killing over 200 people. Images from the aftermath of the storm showed vehicles piled up on roads as people had no time to prepare for what has been called one of the deadliest storms to have ever hit Spain. A landslide hit Papua New Guinea in May, where initial estimates said that more than 2,000 people could have been buried. The United Nations put the official death toll at 670. Multiple instances of flash floods in Afghanistan killed many people this year, around 33 in April, more than 300 in May and around 40 in July. This is not an exhaustive list of extreme weather events in 2024, but only a snapshot of how climate change disrupts and threatens life. We are wrapping this year's tipping point with a story of hope from Pune. Siddesh Sakore is a farmer and founder of Agro Rangers, a non-profit organization that works with farmers who own less than five acres of land with an annual income of under 1 lakh rupees. The organization mainly works in villages affected by drought in Pune district of Maharashtra. Sakore was recognized as one of the land heroes of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, a campaign that recognizes young individuals working in the field of desertification, land degradation and drought. A total of 10 people between the ages 18 and 35 are a part of this cohort of land heroes. Agro Rangers promotes eco-friendly agricultural practices focused on improving the income of farmers and soil health. Over the next three years, the organization is targeting working with 2,500 farmers to achieve these objectives, as well as another goal of sequestering 50,000 tons of carbon by 2027. Thank you for watching this episode of Tipping Point. If you found this discussion insightful, don't forget to subscribe to The Hindu for more updates and in-depth climate coverage.